Hey there and welcome to this updated version of all of my favorite art supplies. I already did a video like this a while ago but a bunch of things have changed in the meantime and so I decided to do an update dated version. I still like all of these supplies that I mentioned in the last video so you can check that out as well in case you're interested. I will try my best to link everything and find all of the supplies that I mentioned so check out the description box for that and in case you're interested to see how I use those supplies and want to see more in-depth tutorials about gouache, watercolors, sketchbook then consider checking out my Skillshare classes. My Skillshare account is always linked in the description box below as well. Let's start with watercolors. These are probably my favorite watercolors right now because it's a very small set and that's just not overwhelming and a lot of a lot easier to use in a way. So this is a White Knights watercolor set and you can see here it doesn't have as many colors as other sets. And the only thing that I changed is there was an ochre tone or a beige tone in here that I didn't really like as much and I switched it up for a turquoise tone and with these white knights watercolors you can buy them individually and so I just bought a turquoise put it in here and now it's my all-time favorite palette I really love this color it's this beautiful yellow golden tone and I also really love the turquoise that I got and the sap green, you can see it here. It's just a very, very beautiful color. So it has my absolute favorite colors in here. Also the red and cyan. I think that's a uh, chronocrodon rose or something like that. And these in combination make a very pretty purple. So I really like this. And I put uh, one of my stickers here. If you want to get my stickers, check out my shop. And I'm currently kind of clearing my shop, so everything is a lot cheaper than it used to be. So check that out. The next palette that I'm gonna be talking about is this one. It has a bunch of stickers on them. Those are from In Liquid Color, who is also a YouTuber here on an artist here on YouTube. And a bunch of other stickers are on here. I just covered the entire thing, and you can barely see the original sticker that was on there it says Arteza because that was an Arteza, Arteza watercolor set and now it is a custom watercolor set I have a video in which I talk about this and setting up this custom palette I left a bunch of Arteza colors in here but a lot of these colors are from different brands all of the hand poured ones are Daniel Smith colors and the pastel tones are from the Prima Confections pastel tone set. And then there's also a few Winsor & Newton and Cotman watercolors in here. So a bunch of different colors, a bunch of different quality levels. Some of them are artist grade. The Daniel Smith ones are other than one of the pink tones. All of them are very light fast. But for the other colors, I'm not so sure. It's the same with the White Knights. I'm not completely sure that they are light fast because I don't really care about it as much. I don't really sell original art. I work a lot in sketchbooks. I honestly don't care if my art fades in the next five years because in five years I will probably not like it as much anymore anyways. I have it all documented, have a lot of pictures of it and videos of it all over the internet. So honestly, I just care about whether the colors are pretty and whether they work for me. But if you care about light fastness, then go into the more professional route and get some Daniel Smith colors, for example. I can really recommend them because I really like them. And all of the other ones in here are just there because I like the colors. I love working with this. And this set has 
a lot in it. It has a lot going on. It's a complete opposite of the other set that I showed you because there's so much here. So sometimes it can get overwhelming, which is why I might pick a smaller set. But I really love the look of all those colors and I really recommend setting up a custom palette with the colors that you love most as soon as you have multiple sets. This is a very fun thing to do. The next one is a palette that has something in it that was not originally in there. You can get those Meaden watercolor palettes empty and you can fill them with whatever you want. I think a lot of brands have these. They are all in all all the same. I think I have a total of three of those palettes that look like this from different brands. They're all completely the same so I don't know if they all manufacture it at the same place. Here you can see the inside of this palette and it has neon watercolors in there and although I haven't used them as much as I would love to, those are very, very beautiful. And I bought them on Etsy actually from a small seller. So I really recommend going on there, supporting small artists who create these things. And uh, these are absolutely beautiful and they're still beautiful. I mean, I kept them in here. I'm assuming that because this is neon, they are probably very fugitive and will fade over time. I don't think it's possible to make neon colors that don't fade. So I think those will probably fade. If you're working in a sketchbook, that's not that big of a deal probably, but they look like real life text markers to be honest. I was so impressed by them and I love painting with them. This one are special watercolors as well. This is also one of my stickers that you can get in my store. You see a theme here. I have stickers on almost everything. This is the Van Gogh metallic watercolor set and I absolutely love this. I am obsessed with this palette. It's a little bit messy. You should probably clean it up at some point. But it does the job. The colors look absolutely amazing on black paper. But they also enhance paintings that you can do with normal watercolors. And then add on these colors for some amazing finishes. Now let's talk about gouache. You can see here that I have a bunch of different brands for gouache. I recently got this Schmincke white tube. I have not used it yet, so I can't even say if I like it, but generally that's a good brand. So I'm expecting it to be good, but it is just in here to show you that I'm using a variety of different gouache brands. I really like the Windsor and Newton gouache. They have a little bit of a thicker consistency than some other gouache types that I've used, but you can just dilute it with a little bit of water and it works really well. And honestly, the Arteza gouache is not too bad, especially for the price point. I really like that. I've used it almost up, this white tube. I recommend getting a lot more white tubes than anything else because you're probably gonna need this. And I also have a few Holbein tubes. Those are very small as you can see because Holbein gouache is very expensive. It's an investment. I don't think it's as expensive in Japan where it comes from, I think, as it is here. If you want a beginner set, I recommend going with the Windsor & Newton. If you want a very big color variety for an affordable price, I would go for Arteza. And as for Schminke, I haven't tried it yet, so I will talk probably more about this as soon as I've tried it. Now let's talk about acrylic gouache. This gouache is more like acrylics in the sense that once it's 
dry, it's waterproof versus water soluble gouache. This one will still be able to be rewetted with water, but acrylic gouache, once it's dry, it's there. This has a lot of advantages or maybe also disadvantages. I have a video where I go more in depth into the differences between those two mediums. As for brands, I really like the Turner acrylic gouache. And I also really love the Holbein acrylic gouache and I have a huge set that doesn't even fit on screen. Look at this. This is my pride and joy. Probably one of the most expensive art supplies that I have invested in. And those are big tubes for gouache and I, I love this so much. I haven't used it nearly enough and I want to do so much with this and I love them just so much. I would say that the Turner and the Holbein are both very very good acrylic gouache and I have a specific video about different brands of gouache so make sure you check that out so you can see a little bit of a comparison of all of those. Now let's move on to markers. I really love Posca markers or Posca pens. Those are acrylic based markers. They will totally rip your paper, but it's kind of worth it because I just love them and other acrylic paint markers will rip your paper as well. They are probably more suited for other surfaces. You can paint rocks with it, for example, or I think even glass. And I just use them on paper, even though you're not supposed to do that. But I really love drawing with them. As for paint markers, Posca's are not the only ones out there. There's also these Molotov ones. And I think that those are at least as good as Posca, if not slightly better. They have a very, very good quality as well. Oh, there's, there's a little Posca in here. And there's also a few colors that I have from Marabu. They also recently released a set with more colors and bigger colors. So in case those are available where you live, then those are a good go-to as well. Speaking of markers, something that I have found recently are those Karen brush markers. And I reached out to them because I really wanted to test them. I saw them all over social media. I fell instantly in love with those. Now, currently I have a collaboration with them. And this is not a sponsored video, by the way. I don't have to include them here, but I really, really like them, which is why they made it into my favorite art supplies, specifically the these ones, the Brush Marker Pros. I really love those. They are very juicy. They are water soluble. I just still have to learn how to use them and which paper to use them on but I really love them. Speaking of collaborations, I've also worked in the past with Stettler or Stettler, which is a very good German brand and I really like their fine liners. I love to use them for details. They come in a very big variety of colors and nip sizes, tip sizes. And I do have a heavy hand. I have to admit that they do kind of the tips. It gets slanted a little bit over time. But uh, apart from that, I really like using them, especially because they are much thicker than the usual fine liners. If you compare them to Arteza or Stabilo fine liners, for example, which are also very good fine liners, I like those more because they are a bit thicker. They're not as long. I think they're just easier to handle in a way. And this is the reason why I also write a lot in my bullet journal with them. Another Stella product that I grew to love are those watercolor pencils. I've created an entire course about them and I just love them. I have used them so much in the last 
almost a year and I really recommend them because they are really worth the price that they are. If you can get your hands on them, go ahead and get them. I am having a hard time finding them on the US Amazon store, but if they are available where you live, those are a good go-to. And now I'm gonna speak about Stettler's biggest competitor, <laughs> or one of the biggest ones, I think, which is Faber-Castell, also a very, very good high-end brand. They have the polychromos that you've probably heard about if you know about professional, colored pencils. I have a set of those that I have had for years. I used to draw with them in college. I've had them. I think I even already had them in high school. So those have been through a lot with me and I really love them. They are high quality and for regular colored pencils, these are my go-to. When it comes to paper, my favorite lately has been this Arches watercolor pad and I just love it. The only thing that I would change about it is this weird black color. I'm sure that they did that intentionally because it looked cool or whatever, but you have this border on every painting and I don't particularly love that. But other than that, I love it. I just think that it's not vegan, unfortunately, which is also something I would probably change. But this is such a good paper. This is a Skillshare course that's coming soon, this painting. I use it for wash. I use it for watercolors, any wet medium that requires very good paper. The only thing that I would not use this for is watercolor pencils because they don't blend as well on this paper. And you probably also know that I love sketchbooks, especially watercolor sketchbooks, so I can do a lot in there and get away with using different media. And I really love the moleskin watercolor sketchbooks because they can handle watercolor and also other media. This, for example, is gouache. Here we have some watercolor, a very hideous page here. <laughs> These are watercolor pencils and I think that that paper from that sketchbook works incredibly well with watercolor pencils because it's not too textured but it can handle watercolor. You just can't put as many layers of watercolor on this paper as you could with a professional paper like the Arches watercolor paper. These stickers, by the way, are also available in my store and this one is holographic. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments down below what is your favorite art supply, favorite brand, favorite type of supply. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.